Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is 23 hours and 21 minutes into the 26th day of November. It is freezing cold out. It's now about uh, 26 degrees uh, Celsius. Let me get the hood chiller fixed up here. Uh, I'm wearing my, my my inner furry hood, and I've got a parka hood on. I've got a parka on now. It's, it's very cold out tonight. Uh, <laughs> it's hard doing the... Uh, the vlogs, particularly the, observ the, the, the observation and the NOS, those these vlog uh, is very difficult to do them out here because it is so cold and so that's why I haven't been vlogging the last few nights out here because uh, uh, I just wasn't able to get the right clothing together to uh, uh, sort of sit out here and do that. Uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow night it might be a better thing. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I have a number of different things on the schedule that. That could be problematic, but that we'll end up have to, we'll have to sort of see uh, how things end up working out. Oh, uh, anyways, uh, we're going to continue on with our observation vlog right now. Uh, we're not going to do the nosiest vlog tonight; it's just too cold uh, to do that. I barely made it to this point, <laughs> so uh, uh, that's, that's, that's I think. This will take us just about 10 minutes before midnight. Uh, so that we'll go in and have something to eat because it, it does. Being out here and it's not, as cold as it sucks the heat right out of you. And that requires a lot more uh, energy and that means food. <laughs> oh. uh, well, clouds are in, in, interesting tonight uh, in terms of the observational perspective. Uh, I usually use the aircraft to determine. Uh, what their altitudes are, and this is tonight is giving a sort of indication that we're supposed to be any lower level clouds, at least not in a significant fashion. Uh, but yet there were lower level clouds because I could hear the jets, but I couldn't see them. So in other words, I couldn't see the aircraft that were above. Uh, I could hear them, but I couldn't see them. They 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 not the lights or anything. So. Uh, that tells me that the uh, uh, clouds have come down pretty low, uh, but this wasn't showing on the satellite, and it's more than likely that these are the clouds that were in the second and third layer uh, because it is so cold dropping, uh, and uh, uh, there was a little bit of snow. Uh, it's sort of stopped now, but uh, you have periods of snow as the uh, clouds start uh, to come in low, and rather than getting rain, you get snow. <sighs> well, that's kind of what I'm sort of seeing today, uh, I haven't been sort of been listening for trains. I've heard of some of the trains in terms of the engines, but I haven't sort of heard the, the uh, horns or anything like that. So that's our, our observation here. But then we continue on with our typical observation, and things are shifting a little bit. Uh, and this is coming primarily from Twitter and following what's going on, on Twitter and so on and so forth. <laughs> Uh, it looks like uh, Lionel uh, Nation is uh, Lionel of Nile Nation. Lionel LeBron of Lionel Nation is trying to sort of keep a track where he is focused primarily on the legal issues. He has gone from the Rittenhouse case now to the Ghislaine Maxwell case. Uh, that's going to be an interesting trial. If you look at the list of uh, somehow the list of co-defendants got out. And including this includes Walt Disney for Fendi, and, you know, Nickelodeon. Uh, the whole list of characters that we would, we would expect to be there is there involved in the Epstein case. Uh, so, you know, do you feel comfortable live, leave, leaving your, kiss, your kids to Disney Plus knowing, knowing that they're a co defendant in a massive uh, 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 trafficking scam? Or scan, well, I mean, scan, trafficking and crime, like slavery, involving even very young girls as young as nine, ten years old. So uh, we're talking, we're talking about th th this is what you would call in terms of your common terminology, is what you mean, your pedophile. So do you want your children watching TV shows created by pedophiles, or or, or, or at least uh, pushing them, that, pushing the shows in that direction? You wonder why these. The Disney shows are so open and they need to be diverse. Well, no, 
is about the making the the whole concept of you know so-called open sexuality part of the normal life and in order to do this they have to have these various different uh, shows and they're trying to bring in uh, well, things like even like like nudity um, there was which one is it it's um, the trolls the new troll show uh, I watched a little bit of it now I even watched the, the you know the so-called the re, the, re, the, the, the the Jellystone Park with the new with the new one of the uh, of with uh, 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 you know uh, what is this name? Uh, Yogi Bear and uh, his friend Boo Boo. Well, they've completely turned it around, and now they're living together as partners. And Boo Boo gets these you know these thigh high you know hooker boots and walks around, and then everyone else starts doing the same thing. It, it, there's it's, it's like back when Shrek came around. And the whole Shrek thing was filled with sexual innuendos. This is sexualization aimed at children. But the bizarre thing is watching people, watching how they observed this, how, how they sort of were watching TV with the kids, and they thought the whole thing was funny. <laughs> the, 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 sense, the sense that people have today, it just is kind of sort of mind-boggling, but... At the same time, you can sort of sort of see how things sort of play out, and you know you're on a list. You know you go onto Twitter and you can create these lists where there's a lot of researchers, so you can you can weed out these sort of uh, I call them wackos, but the thing is they are, uh, they, they consider themselves to be uh, highly woke. They're typically lawyers. They're, they're people who are investors who consider themselves to be uh, intellectually superior. But have no scientific knowledge whatsoever, and tend to insert their views on things in a manner that are just, just, you know, what was what, how Lionel mimics it? Well, you know, that's not really part of the case there. It's you know, and, and he's not, he's not sort of adding information. He's telling you what the reality is, he's, and expressing his reality is superior to yours because he is. X, Y, and Z, but typically not scientific. So what happens is you read through the scientific papers, read through the research articles, and you're putting together an understanding of what the situation is uh, with uh, virology. And as I said before, a large chunk of the information is classified as uh, dual use for re dual use uh, research of concern. Why? Because virology typically is part of uh, bio warfare. You can you can create bio weapons out of this. This is why my area, which is uh, quantum physics, involves nuclear physics as well, and particle physics. And Tesla, which is basically atmospheric physics. Um, I don't say much of anything about in terms of going actual details of atmospheric physics, because uh, well, it's uh, restricted information. And so you, you can't bring that stuff up. That's what I've got. I've got uh, the person that I knew, the researcher who was working on uh, directed energy weapons. His name was John Hutchinson. If you look up the Hutchinson effect, he was, he was taken away. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be taken away. He was taken away because he, he certainly posted all his work to the internet. He's the guy who had bowling balls floating in midair. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, when he got to the point where he couldn't do his his, his you know, do anything more than with what he had. Well, that was it. That was the end, and they came and took him away. Ugh, sorry. And the thing is, this is the nature of of the game: is that there is, is certain hidden, hidden, and and even forbidden information out there. And you simply don't discuss it. I can show you. I can tell you how to get into it. How to sort of you know peruse around the library and sort of find this information out for yourself, because it is basically a puzzle, and you have to peruse around the library to sort of figure out where, where all the different pieces are, and then, of course, how they fit together. Uh, and so, by, by no means giving you, uh, oh, here's how you do, you know, here's how you create an atomic bomb. You can put it in your briefcase and bring it with you to work. <laughs> no, it's, you bring in the concept um, you have to study to do the research. You have to uh, uh, really sit down and understand the mechanisms of things. And there, uh, I'm not going to give you that information. I'm not going to give you the direct information on how to do something. I can show you where to look, what things to look at. And of course, 
to, if you want to build a good uh, working uh, model of the atomic bomb, you're going to need a good, a good working knowledge of quantum physics. This is, this is, that's, as, that's as simple as it gets, but of course, quantum physics is a massive open field. Uh, and therefore, it's the quantum physics is the edge of science. That's where it's the edge of science. But there is a beyond quantum physics. Uh, and once you step beyond quantum physics and you do that, you're in no man's land where there's really no sort of sense of that there is something more there that there is something more called fundamentals of science. Science at that point in time ends. You enter into a world, the world that is random. You know, we'll talk about chaos theory. Um, they have a number of theories that are out there that sort of live in that sort of realm that uh, we're now outside of your standard physics. You're outside of outside of your standard mechanics, and and well, you know, good luck to you, sort of. <laughs> but I'm mean, I'm used to it. that's why I'm kind of you know where am I giving my lecture? Where am I doing my essay? I'm doing that out here. At, at, you know, and it's about 26 degrees, 27 degrees Fahrenheit out here. It's freezing cold. And so I've got my park on. I've got you know I've changed a little bit. I've added extra layers to it. I've got two layers of gloves because I need the I need the uh, the dexterity to sort of uh, manipulate things. But at the same time, it's just you know way too cold out here. So that's what sort of the, the sort of tripping things up. But the thing is, but what happens is you'll see as a person, you know, they post. You're having this serious discussion. And you're watching the information that's being post posted, and we're getting information from like articles from uh, the American Journal, the American Journal of uh, uh, of uh, Medicine, you, uh, uh, from the United States. You're getting from Lancet. You're getting from uh, the British Journal of Medicine. You're getting from uh, the American Heart Association. They have one called called Circulation for uh, for Cardiology. And when you're starting to see the reports show up as they are in, with concerns of what's happening with the vaccines. This is an anti. This is an anti-vax issue. This is this is real research. But every once in a while, you'll get one of these lowerly types who who has been watching a lot of CNN will come up. That's not what's reported in the news. Duh. No kidding. It's not reported in the news because we're talking about the research. We're talking about unredacted reports. What you get in the in the news in CNN and so on and so forth, you're getting redacted information. You're getting the data that has been redacted. You're not getting the entire thing. It's been fixed. I mean, but again, they don't seem to understand that this is the case. And you, again, you have these idiots. Every once in a while, pop in, you know. And guess they have their they have their degree in sociology. They have the degree in psychology. They have the degree in, you know, social engineer. They're they're a social scientist. They or they have their degree in, in you know, uh, research and economics. You know, they're, they're, they're an economist, and they know, they know their numbers, they know their data. They've sat down and crunched everything. They've... But the thing is, what you can crunch all you want. It's how you understand the data and where you get the data from. You have to sit down and understand where the data comes from. It's not simply a matter of crunching the data. Of course, none of these people have any other sense at all. They have they have no sense of this. And the thing is, what's what's disheartening? You see these these people in the uh, in the uh, uh, so these sort of bureaucratic positions, sort of not paying attention to anything. Well, yeah, I'll crank, yeah, yeah. And they're 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 befuddled and bewildered by what? Why aren't these sort of bureaucrats listening? Well, these are the same, and I said this before. These are the same bureaucrats that you had in, in Hitler's day, where that that sort of put everyone, uh, you know, into a, the euthanasia camps. That's what these death camps were. They were euthanasia camps, and they convinced the entire public that they, they were doing a good service to protect these people, and they were going to protect society from. The, Dangers of these, these people who were defective. Of course, the Jews, by their na very nature, that they were defective. <laughs> so you know, but the thing is, not all Jews ended up going. It was the, it was the Jews who were who were basically called religious. See, under, under socialism, whether it's Nazi or or is it uh, communism, 
Nazis is genetics. If you, every time you talk about genetics, you're talking about Nazis. Every time you're talking, every time you're talking about, every time you're talking about uh, the psychology, the 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 environment, that's communism. But they often work together in order to achieve what we call the humanist understanding. So humanism is the top is the, is the top top of the pyramid. Inside the pyramid, you have socialism. Uh, and on the social side, on the social movement, the right is Nazi, eugenics, genetics, and the left is communism, which is basically psychology. And so every time you, you have these, these, these progressive pop up, and these progressives actually work on this dialectic, uh, Hegelian dialectic, that in order to create progress, you have to have a violent clash between the synthesis, the uh, thesis and antithesis. This is the nature of the whole game. This is the nature of the beast. I'm sorry, but my eyes have been closed the whole time. But uh, it is the cold saps the energy. As I said before, the cold saps the energy out of you, and so it's easier to produce uh, my sounds speaking uh, in terms of conserving energy. It's easier to keep have my eyes closed. So. Uh, it's almost like I'm sleeping, but uh, so I'm, uh, enough energy is being redirected uh, to speaking that it, then uh, so I can uh, uh, same uh, do the verbal essay and and, and get through it okay because I'm, I'm sort of running out of energy. So you you, you look at the construction of it. You go and do your work research work in the library and begin to realize. That what's going on today is what happened back in 1940, what happened under Hitler. And again, it's a process that goes into this. But you go look at all the social, all the socialist experiments. And of course, the planned economy is the economy of those who are in control. It is this vassal state that, that sort of create, is created to protect the elites. And it's these elites who want to do the social engineering. Who, who introduce socialism because they want to get as they want to get as they want to get rid as many, of many as many people on earth as possible. Why is it to save the earth? Well, no, not really. It's not necessarily an issue of calling the population, as some people talk about. Oh, it's calling the population. Well, no, not necessarily. The gods that these elites believe in require blood sacrifices. They get their wealth. They, this is the, called the Faustian bargain. That's a, uh, you know, twi- uh, you see Lionel LeBron on Twitter on on, on a regular basis. Lionel Nation, Lionel Media is there almost continuously on on Twitter. And he's saying, "What's wrong with the celebrities in terms of the way, the way they behave and the way they act?" And I said, "Well, basically, the all the celebrities and the reason why they behave the way they behave is they've got a, a, a you call a Faustian issue." And this goes back to uh, this goes back to the book Faust. It goes back to some of the ideas that were sort of floating around back then, and they're still with us today. But they're, just, they're there in the, in a more hidden fashion. Uh, but almost, you know, I, I predicted that no one would understand what I was talking about, and nobody did. Uh, Lionel himself didn't even comment on it, so that means it may have gone over his head as well. Uh, <sighs> Sounds like a good train coming in. But this is what you see. You see people stick, sticking within within their own sphere. You have Yvette Carnell, who is still always talking about ADOS. Her thing is ADOS. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily realize what the United States has done globally. And this is not just the United States. This is Europe and so forth. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is look at the at the United Fruit Company in the United States, in in South America, known as the a bit of short horn.
from my recollection, because we heard the horn here first at this at the right or the eastbound west east eastern waveguide, that this is is now a what an eastbound train that's going uh, towards Oshawa. That's the direction it's it's heading in east. If it were the westbound westbound uh, train, uh, you would have heard the horn further away and get closer and closer. But because we heard the horn here first, loudest first, and then traveling off in terms of its volume or the amplitude of the wave, that tells me that this is uh, a, a, a um, an eastbound train. So. Anyways, uh, there doesn't seem to be, a, in, in many cases, what I'm seeing now is sort of a bit of a despair because it doesn't seem like there's anything that anyone can do about this. In many cases, that's what's happening is we are in a situation that we kind of have to ride through it's, it, because you're not going to be able to correct the government in this situation. And the thing is, this, again, this is not, this is not anything new. And I think this is where ADOS comes in in terms of talking about ADOS. I mean, look, look at, look at, look at the, look at bananas. Do the history of bananas. Go look, look at uh, what was done in the United, in the uh, South America with this whole thing uh, with the United Fruit Company. And this is also going, the same thing is going on now with avocados. Everyone who loves avocados, do you know you're supporting slavery? If you eat avocado toast, you're supporting slavery because it's still going on today. Slavery hasn't ended. So the problem with ADOS is restricting it to simply black Americans, where this whole slavery thing is still fundamentally global. No one's going to pay any attention to it because they understand that, that the slavery is global. They understand that the West is at the core of it. And then they, they're not going to pay any because they have never they never have paid anyone back in terms of reparations. Most of this reparation stuff is nothing more than a scam. It's a way to collect more tax dollars. Do you ever think you're going to see a dime from the government for anything? I mean, look at the infrastructure bill. Because they thought, oh, you have to talk about the infrastructure bill. Okay. Well, what happened? He was talking about Howard at Howard University. All the mold in the dorm. How the, they had to protest the students over the living conditions in the dormitories at Howard University. Well, think about it. Ask yourself the question. Obama has spent trillions of dollars on infrastructure programs, and yet none of it showed up to repair the dorms. Those dorms were, should have been repaired. They never did. Right? They just now passed trillions of dollars of, of, of another trillion dollars of Build Back Better infrastructure programs. How much of that is going to be seen by Howard University? Or any of these, they're showing these, these projects. In, uh, in in the United States, we watch uh, reading through the New York Post, looking what's going on in Brooklyn, the number of apartments that uh, need to be repaired. They say that the backlog is growing. So not only is is, is nothing being spent in terms of nothing the money that was sort of earmarked or sort of oh we're going to spend one point trillion one point five trillion dollars on infrastructure. No, you're not. You're not going to do anything with it. You're going to shove it off to your friends. That money is going to disappear. This is the nature of, of government. And it was it's there in Yes Minister from the BBC. It's there in Yes Prime Minister. This was in the 1980s. Someone commented in Twitter on how they've opened up a nice new hospital that has zero patients in it. I said, Why open a hospital with zero patients? It's fully staffed with an administrator. With administration, this is what Yvette Carnell was talking about. How Howard University is fully staffed with administrators, but not enough professors. Well, this is this is the nature of bureaucracy. This is exactly what what is talked about and brought out in um, yes, minister and yes, prime minister. That bureaucracy finds that the best way to run something is to have all bureaucrats in, run in it, and no doctors, no nurses, nothing, no patients. As long as it's fully staffed with, with, with administrators, the hospital is perfectly fine. That, when the hospital is at its best. Their whole view of life and everything is simply their own sense of control, their own sense of their wealth, giving themselves money, and that's it. 
I said before, because people are, are bemoaning now this new Omicron uh, uh, variant, which is kind of bullshit because there, there are so many variants uh, within CVD that it's, this is why it's called CVD. CVD covers you know, all the variants. There, there are millions of variants. Every time you, you have one variant within you, it automatically shifts and has a, produces a new variant. This is the, this is the reality. The mRNA technology isn't new. It's old. It came out in the 1930s. It was developed by the Soviet Union. They just been calling it something brand new so they can make more money at it. And this is sort of the nature of what we're living with, living in this world that's almost, this is, I don't know, bathed in bullshit. And the thing is, not that it's not that there isn't truth out there, but just, you have to find it. You have to realize you're not going to be part of the system if you will, really want to see the truth. But of course, this is what the nature, the nature of the vassal state, and this is what happened. Howard University, the black historical colleges, were set up to pull black people, certain black people, out of the standard population and create a vassal kingdom of black Americans. This is what the NAACP is. It's the vassal state created by the elites in order to control the African, the, the black population of the United States. It's a control mechanism. It's not there for freedom in terms of, of, of black freedom. It's there for control. And they do their due, due diligence in protecting the, in protecting the vassal state. They Because they're getting part of it. They're getting the money from it. They get their prestige from it. This is the whole nature of Felicia Rashad. She's part of the vassal state. And they're going to protect their own. They're not going to help you out. And this is, they're, oh, 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 you know, all the blue states are going down there, they're, they're, and people are dreading it. I said, you, know, well, you voted for this. If you voted Biden, if you voted for, for any blue state, you voted Democrat, then you voted for this. And the comment comment kind of back, well, what do you do? Vote for Republicans? They're just as bad. Oh, really? Look at the look at the Republican states. Are they locked down? No. And I, said, I don't like Republicans. I'm not a fan of Republicans. I'm not a fan of Trump. However, I am an independent, I am anti-establishment, and I want my vote to be for the least amount of government. And because Republicans typically typically give you the least amount of government, and they're not locked down the way other states, the blue, the blue states are, I'm going to vote Republican. It has nothing to do with love or like or about Republicans. It's, I don't want to be free. I don't want to be put in prison. I want to be free. And every time the liberals are around, whether it's whether it's municipal, state, or federal, they lock people up in prisons and say, "Oh, we've got a variant of concern going on." This is their, this is the whole thing. You see this globally. They're putting people in prison camps, they're calling them re-education camps or or, or, or or internment camps, where you, you know they have these hotels where you know if you're coming in, you have to stay in the hotel for 14 days. And, and they, they, have, they go through these ridiculous lengths. But again, it's all these bureaucrats within these public the, the, you know, public health departments who call the shots on this stuff. And they're feeling their oats. This is the uh, Zimbardo Lucifer effect. This is, you know, Stanford Prison all over again. Stanford Prison Experiment. Again, this is done in the 1970s. It's all well known about. It should be anyway, but uh, uh, they're not paying attention because they don't have to. They don't care. I mean, with these type of people in, this is how under under Pol Pot in Cam Cambodia, you had ten million people dead. You had this; they created a whole thing that was the f the number of dead was so bad because they were piling them up in rice fields. You would see miles and miles of of bone bleach bones in rice paddies, and they call, were called the killing fields. They had a movie about that. Uh, you go to the Ukraine in Ukraine. You have 10 million people dead, starved starve to death, because these idiots, who were the bureaucrats, couldn't figure out how to farm. And when they th said they knew how to farm better than the peasants did, than than, than the peasant farmers did, so they took over everything, and they, people starved to death. This is the reality of the situation. The only way to do, to deal with it is to walk away, unless of course you want to pick up arms and start a war. I'm not a person who likes to pick up, picking up a gun and starting a war. That's not my choice. Not my idea of things. Anyways, uh, this is it for now. And uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, <laughs> transitions vlog and then go inside.
CPR, Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween and Middle School for Life.